Hi everyone, welcome to SF Live this Thursday night at 5.30. I'm your host, Rebecca Taff, and my guests tonight are from Chinese Affirmative Action, which was founded in 1969 to protect the civil and political rights of Chinese Americans, and to also advance the multiracial, this is a long introduction, um, advance multiracial, I should have printed it bigger, democracy in the United States. Today they are pro a progressive voice in and on behalf of the other broader Asian, Asian and Pacific American community. This is so much longer than I usually make it. So let me welcome our guests from the great Chinese affirmative action. <laughs> um, we have Vincent Pan, who is a civil rights and social justice um, leader, and you're also the executive director of the CAA, and we have Stephanie Ong, who is a board member of the CAA. So thank you guys for being here and bearing with my extremely long <laughs> introduction. Thank you for having us. Oh good, so tell me about what is the CAA. Chinese for Affirmative Action is a community-based social justice um, social justice organization, and we defend civil rights and promote social change. Some of our landmark successes include suing the San Francisco Police Department to hire more women and minorities. Oh, Very important. Yeah. Yes. And I was a gender the, studies minor, so go. Yeah, ladies, yay, go more ladies. women and minorities. Good thing. <laughs> and um, also the Supreme Court case Lau versus Nichols, which allowed, um, which gave the right for English language learners a right to an education. Mm. So those are the two things we're most known for. And is it only in San Francisco? Our work is um, based in San Francisco, mm -hmm. but we've taken on things that have statewide and national implications. Mm -hmm. uh, so oftentimes, and we think of it as, as really uh, growing and building our, our base of constituents locally, but um, you know, positioning ourselves to act in a, a much uh, larger scale. So, how did you guys? Were you founded by one person, or a different organization, or a group of volunteers? Well, we are celebrating 40 years this year. It's very exciting. So 40 years of progressive change. We were founded in 1969 by mm -hmm. young activists, you know, not that different from Vin and I, basically. Um, and we were founded to advocate for Asian Americans who were denied equal opportunities in employment and education. Mm -hmm. So a group of young activists just got together and said, you know, we need to get together and fight and, um, you know, work on some of these injustices and make sure that there's equal opportunities for everybody. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, that sounds, work, sounds like a good plan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and the work continued to evolve. So I think there was always this um, interest in, in prioritizing the needs of the most marginalized in the community and doing whatever it took to get things done. And so I think in the early years, following some of the uh, the successes of the African-American-led civil rights movement, there was a lot of work in litigation. Uh, but over time, you know, we've uh, gotten stronger at organizing, doing work uh, through the media and communications and, and policy advocacy. And so it isn't just about uh, litigation, but actually changing people's hearts and minds that will eventually affect the types of laws that we have and the type of institutions that we have. And what kind of services do you provide? Are you only sort of an organization that's sort of working towards change within sort of government and stuff, or do you actually work one-on-one -on -one with right. people in the community? Right. Well, this is one of the things that I think makes uh, CA very unique, uh, because even though, you know, what we're probably more visible on are our advocacy campaigns, mm -hmm. trying to change laws, trying to change public perception, uh, we really are rooted in the community because we do provide uh, a wide range of direct services, and these allow us to understand where people are coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a very large parent leadership development program where we have immigrant parents who are learning English, mm -hmm. um, able to gain skills and better understand how to navigate the public school system. Um, each year we have over 500, 600 people come through our doors looking for help finding jobs or, or accessing vocational training. Um, we have a, a, a large part of our work uh, focused on helping new immigrants access uh, the legal services they need mm -hmm. as immigration laws change. And so all this work allows us to sort of stay in touch with you know, what, what's actually happening in real people's lives, the, the challenges that they're facing, and then that informs the type of advocacy that we do. And so have you seen, what's the most recent issues you've seen arise, like you said, job, finding a job is difficult for right. <laughs> yes. a regular San Francisco citizen who's lived there, here their whole life, or lived in America, nonetheless someone who's coming right over from somewhere else and maybe mm -hmm. can't speak English as well. Is that one of the major th things that's mm -hmm. coming up right now? Well, one of the, one of our recent successes was um, the Chinatown campus. And of the community college yeah. district, city college. And what happened there? What is that? I have no idea what any of that is, so <laughs> enlighten me. Well, you know, um, you know, for almost uh, 30 years, uh, the Chinese American community has been fighting for a permanent city college campus in mm -hmm. San Francisco Chinatown in North Beach. 
Uh, right now, the facilities are located in a hodgepodge of church spaces, community centers, and an old elementary school. Mm -hmm. uh, and over the years, uh, we've organized to get bond measures passed to actually fund the construction of a first-class uh, modern educational facility. Um, now, it's taken a long time, and there have been many roadblocks, but uh, we were finally able to uh, secure uh, the funding, the political will, all the votes necessary to, to, to break ground very recently. And so when this um, campus is finally built, uh, we'll be able to ensure that over 6,000 immigrant students are able to take uh, job training classes, uh, English as a second language classes, uh, citizenship classes, all the types of things that you mentioned that, you know, for many newcomers, they need to be able to get a foothold uh, into American society and ultimately survive. So that's a, a yeah. big part of, you know, how we see um, equal opportunity playing out, making sure that folks have uh, the access to the type of education and uh, improvement opportunities that they need so that they can be self-sufficient. And do you think it's, because um, I know a lot of, if a lot of um, maybe Asian Americans are sort of, if they come and then they have a kid here and then the kid's all normal, do you think they're all normal? Not like they're not normal. A kid is very Americanized, mm -hmm. but then their parent is still, they're first generation. Do you think that that's a different shift in community services that you're trying to provide for them? Or do you provide for maybe the older generation that came and then they have children here? It's both. I think CAA is very unique because we bridge all the various um, generations within the Asian American community as well as the various ethnicities. Because the Asian community is very diverse. Right. Language, and in, depending on when you came over here or whether you were first, second, third generation, mm -hmm. you're going to have a very different experience. And so we hope that with CAA, um, like a recent immigrant can come in, meet people at CAA and become active in their own community and um, you know participate in such a way that they own their role in their community. I mean a good story is um, there was a young uh, a student who mm -hmm. immigrated from China. He goes to the Chinatown campus and started to learn um, you know he took ESL classes mm -hmm. and um, him and his wife came over here trying to learn English. He worked at night as a janitor and through you know learning about the issue around the Chinatown campus he learned that um, the Hilton was trying to block the construction of the campus in which mm. he was going to get an education. Mm. And so he got really involved. You know, he wanted to organize students. He ran for student union president and now is the president of the Chinatown North Beach campus. Well, and I just love that. that story because it's exactly what we want. We want to spark that interest. And so now he's involved. And while he might not be a citizen now, he will be and he'll be an active participant in the community. I mean, that's really what CAA is about. And do you think that education, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of what I've heard you talk about because education can give you so many things yes. so you can right. go out and get a job. Is that one of your main focuses that you guys have? Well, I think historically education employment and employment have mm -hmm. been seen as the gateways, but, you know, really undergirding that is something um, that's much more values-based, that over time we uh, have really tried to underscore the idea that, you know, civil rights uh, isn't just about, you know, what we look like, but what we stand for. And, you know, fundamentally what we're trying to do is create a, a uh, world, a uh, San Francisco that works for everybody. Um, so, you know, we are active on a whole range of issues, um, trying to promote the importance of, of uh, marriage equality within the Asian American, mm -hmm. uh, within the Asian American community, uh, ensuring that all residents, regardless of immigration status, are able to access public services. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that, um, you know, even though education and employment have historically been, you know, those gateways, uh, we see ourselves active on a whole range of issues that maybe for some people they wouldn't necessarily think of as an Asian American issue. Mm. But fundamentally, if it's about inclusion, if it's about justice, then those are the things that we want to work on. Yeah, so you guys are Chinese for affirmative action, but I, uh, what are some of the things you do for other communities within yeah. sort of, I know you do like yeah. Pacific Islander and sort yeah. of stuff like that, so. Well, ultimately, you know, the policies that we're promoting mm -hmm. aren't uh, race specific, they, right. aren't ethnic they aren't ethnicity specific. Um, you know, I think that because of our long history in the Chinese American community, we see uh, that as a way to organize. And so we're able to uh, have particularly strong relationships with uh, the Chinese American community, both newcomers and uh, you know a generation of baby boomer progressives. Um, but at the same time, you know we're always looking to partner not just with other Asian ethnic communities, mm -hmm. but with the Latino mm -hmm. community, with the African American community. And you know right in our mission statement is this uh, imperative to try and create a multiracial democracy, and that it isn't about you know the advancement of one group right. over the other, but you know figuring out how we can you know all work together and create something that uh, you know that fundamentally is about. Um, equality for, for everyone.
I know, and wouldn't that be just magic? I know, right? <laughs> that actually happened. So what are sort of the trends that you've seen or how has the organization grown over the 40 years? Or what have been sort of the ups and downs or the landmarks that you guys have had? Well, I think for me, I mean, I've been involved with CAA for at least five to six years, and I've mm -hmm. been on the board for about three. And so for me, what's really cool is while CAA has a history of um, helping more recent um, immigrants, mm -hmm. now I feel like what I talked about earlier is it's bridging young students and, you know, the younger generation, young professionals, as well as recent immigrants to have a space to be able to um, relate to each other. 